I'm not totally sure about this, but uh, I'm pretty sure um, electrophoresis needs to be developed in terms of mass and time. Um, you can chop up a cell and each of its fragments will run through electrophoresis based on mass and time of electricity on the surface. And the surface may need to be some type of metal or gel or jelly or whatever kind of surface is actually going to work. Um, the, uh, the particles of a cell can be measured in terms of mass and usually ma the mass of a particle gives it its identity. If you know the mass, it will pretty much uh, be uh, identified um, if you know the exact mass. Um, so electrophoresis are a process that goes with electrophoresis. Um, needs to be accurate enough to measure the mass of all the particles of a cell. Once you measure all the masses of all the particles of a cell, you can actually put them into a computer or a supercomputer, the masses, and sequence them or simulate them or emulate them into a simulation that um, predicts what the cell looks like in terms of molecular structure. Um, the key ingredient is getting the masses, and that's the most difficult part. Um, so electrophoresis will separate each of the masses, and you would need a rather long electrophoresis device to separate all the masses of a cell. And then basically, once you do that, there may you may also use a time of flight mass spectrometer. Um, you're going to use acids and different things like that. And then, you know, you could do the DNA as well. You know, every single particle of a cell. Uh, you may need enzymes. You may need to use PCR, which is called... Um, um, poly... Uh, poly... Uh, I can't remember what it, what it means all of a sudden. Uh, PCR, look it up. Um, PCR is how you... Uh, polymerase chain reaction, there we go. Um, you, you may need that at some point to copy DNA. Or maybe other molecules, I'm not sure what other molecules PCR potentially could do in the future, I'm not sure. And then... To program cells, you use CRISPR or a virus. Or there's also potentially methylation. And then um, when you do that, you get DNA changes and stuff. There's, there's probably new sciences that I'm not aware of, but that's the majority of it. And then um, you can do what you want with your cells. Uh, I'm not sure how to program bacteria. There's different ways to program that too. And then also probably uh, if you're programming a fungus or yeast, that might be different. And then, you know, different cells are potentially different, different kinds of cells. You know, you have prokaryotes and eukaryotes, and not all of them are the same structures. So if you're measuring a human cell, like I said, chop it up, put it under electrophoresis, separate it all out into fragments, but you want to try to find their mass, so this needs developed. You want every particle's mass, and each particle with this specific mass will fall into a group. And if they have the same mass, which not all of them will, they have the same mass, they'll be the same 
mass rate flowing through the electrophoresis based on electrical current. So that's pretty much what you want to do is get all the masses and then you want to use a computer, especially a supercomputer um, or a quantum computer to calculate all of their their structures. All you need is the mass and uh, that gives you the identity and identity is what you need. You need to identify everything in the universe and then once you do that, voila, voila, you got it. It's nothing but that, mass. So you put the masses together and then you take a chemical like a medicine that you want to develop and you have to make assumptions and react that chemical through the cell to show um, where it reacts with where what it does to the cell how it processes and um, uh, basically that's how you do it and then it could take a really long time that's the problem is that when you simulate a cell you're you're simulating up to like I think it's like a hundred trillion a hundred trillion or some hundred trillion atoms so you'll be simulating a long time that's why you need a supercomputer and a lot of memory um, it has to do it really fast and you have to have the right algorithm um, so you're simulating a hundred trillion atoms to equal one cell if you know the masses of your particles, that'll cut it down by to about a trillion, which is doable, but you can't really simulate that very easily on a regular computer. But on a supercomputer, you probably could. So, and then your algorithm has to be really smart. Um, that is really key. You need to know your endpoints, basically connect the chemistries. Uh, you have to connect the chemistries based on their um, most logical endpoints, which is geometry and um, energy and uh, chemical charges and stuff. Um, and then you have to, you may have to incorporate um, natural processes like natural chemistry and how they actually cause atoms to react so reactivity is the key here and um, they do that specifically pretty specifically so you know you got your primary molecules and compounds and then you just basically set up a, a scheme of algorithms and and react it it's 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 quite difficult to understand cuz there may be missing information so but you should come up with something if you know all the masses of the particles in a cell so that's the key ingredient so um this this is uh this video is going to be called the topology of medicine